Now, in the next slide, we will focus on equation 98 to calculate the vector F1. Keep in mind that the computation of vector F1 now also including this term W raised to the power n0 k0. So let's focus on equation 98, how to find out vector F1. Well, the first thing that we can recognize is if you look at equation 98, you will see that you have the term something like W raised to the power 4N0K1. Let's try to see what is that term equal to. W raised to the power 4N0K1. Let's see what is that term equal to. Okay, here it is. That term is right here. W raised to the power 4N0K1. Well, the power of W is 4 times N0K1. That is the same thing as here. So now, let us try to see what is the definition of W. What is the definition of W? The answer is W alone, okay? Just W without a power 4, W by definition that we have earlier is equal to E raised to the power minus I times 2 pi divided by capital N. But remember capital N in this case mean what? The capital N in this case is equal to uh, R1 time R2. In this case, the value of capital N is equal to, let's see now, 4 by 4, I think. Let me just one second, I want to double check. Yeah, you see, capital N is equal to the product of R1 time R2, where R1 and R2 each equal to 4. Okay? So, capital N is equal to R1 times R2, which is the same thing as 16. That is the value of the capital N. So, that is the definition of W. Now, when you take that W, you raise to the power 4, so you take that this W, you raise to the power 4 in here, and that means you have to raise that to the power 4. And then after that, you raise to the power N0K1. So you both raise that to the power N0K1, raise that to the power N0K1. Now, something can be simplified. For example, 4 times 2 is 8, divide by 16, so that will become 2. Okay? So, on the right-hand side, what you have is e raised to the power minus i pi divided by 2 raised to the power n0 k1. And that is shown in equation 101. So basically, equation 101 say that W raised to the power 4N0K1 is equal to the right-hand side. Now, it turned out that the right-hand side of equation 101 will give you the value of W raised to the power 4N0K1. And the value for that left hand side will depending on the value of N0 and the value of K1 that you provide. So let's take a look at the next slide 
will show you table one. Let's see what happened. You see, on the next slide, we have the product of N0 times K1. Remember, N0 and K1 each can be some kind of an integer value. They have an integer value. Okay? So, like, for example, if N0 equal to 0, K1 equal to 0, then the product is equal to 0. If N0 equal to 1, K1 equal to 1, then the product is equal to 1. If N0, let's say, equal to 1, K1 equal to 2, then the product equal to 2, and so on, so on, so on. So, the, the product of N0 times K1 could be either 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or 4. And if the product of N0 times K1, if that is equal to 0, then W raised to that power is equal to 1. On the other hand, if the product N0 times K1 equal to 1, then W raised to that power for N0 K1 will be equal to minus I. You can see that easily because, let's see now, if you take a look at this case, uh, W raised to the power 4 times product K0 uh, N0 K1. But if that product N0 K1 is equal to 1, that means you have 4 times 1, so that should be equal to W raised to the power 4. But the definition of W is what? E raised to the power minus 2i. No, ra E raised to the power minus i times 2 pi divide by capital N. That is the definition of W. Minus I, okay? And raised to the power 4. Now, in this particular example, capital N is equal to 16. <coughs> <coughs> Therefore, the formula simplifies a little bit because 2 times 4 is 8 divided by 16 then it will be equal to e raised to the power minus i times pi over 2. And that will turn out to be equal to minus i. In other words, this term right here is equal to minus i. And the reason we can say that this term is equal to minus i is because we make use of the so-called Euler identity again. So, as you can see, when the product N0 K1 is equal to 1, then W raised to that power is equal to minus i. Similarly, when the product N0 K1 is equal to 2, then W raised to the power 4, N0, K1, become minus 1. When the product N0, K1 equal to 3, then the second column, the answer is plus I. When the product of the first column, N0, K1 equal to 4, the second column value equal to plus 1. So you can see very clearly, for different combination of the value N0, K1, the value of the second column which is the value of W raised to the power 4 N0 K1, either will be plus 1 or minus 1. Plus I or minus I. They can only have those values only. So, that's exactly what we said here. Depending on the value of the product N0 K1, the value of W raised to the power 4 N0 K1 either can be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i. So what it means is that 
we don't have to calculate the value of w raised to that power. It will be either plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i. And because we don't have to calculate about that term, that means we can s further save the computational effort. Okay. So now we are already talk about the computational of F1. Then let's take a look at the computational for the vector F2. Well, if you look at the equation that we derived to you earlier, the computational for F2. Okay, here it is. You see the computational for F2, if you take a look carefully, it is shown in equation 92. And for the computation of the vector of equation 90, 99, you have a term which is very similar like what we talked earlier. In other words, we say, what is the value of this guy? W raised to the power of 4N1K0. Well, as you can see from equation 98, the computation for the term W raised to the power 4N1K0, shown in equation 99, is very similar like W raised to the power 4N0K1, as shown in equation 98. So, again, this term, raised, W raised to the power 4N1K0, again, we can show that equal to either plus or minus plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i just like what we have for w raised to the power 4n0 k1 so again that computation in equation 99 essentially we don't have to compute this term w raised to the power 4n1 k0 for the same reason that we said in equation 98 and therefore we can save the multiplication between F1 and this W term in equation 90, 99. So we can save again more computational effort and that is basically what I said is for equation computation for vector F2. So that is the idea of the so-called Tweedle factor. So we can take advantage of this Tweedle factor in order to further speed up the computational process. And the idea can be generalized to capital N equal to the product of three integers instead of just the product of the two integers that I discussed in this chapter. Or it can be even generalized further to the product of M integer and that is the end of this chapter actually we don't want to talk about the uh, computer programming in this lecture here so that is the end of this lecture and uh, the acknowledgement is here